Good afternoon, everyone. We are bringing you some breaking news that is happening now in Allen. We will get you back to Derby coverage in a moment. But first, we need to tell you about that. We have learned a shooting has taken place at the Allen Premium Outlet Mall. That's right off of 75 and Stacy Road. Police confirm this is an active shooting investigation. This has been going on for about an hour or so now. This is our camera there, what we've been seeing. We've been watching people walking out of the mall, out of that shopping area with their hands up. As you see, they're greeted by a lot of law enforcement there. Yep, there was, we're watching the video there, some with the hands up, the scenes that we see often at these active shooting situations, and we've seen people kind of coming out, holding on to each other as well. But again, we just want to reiterate, this has been a, an active shooting situation at the Allen Premium Outlet Mall, so that has happened just within the hour, last hour. Police are on that scene. We do have know that the ATF out of Dallas, they are headed to that scene as well to assist with this investigation. Well, Vince, we are across the street where those hundreds who were inside the mall say they were evacuated evacuated by police with their hands up in lines across the street. They say just like you see on TV in situations you never imagined will happen here at home. We have heard about a lot of chaos. You can see all of these crowds here waiting to get back to their cars. Most now have reunited with family if they were separated while this was happening. We were told that people heard several gunshots. Some actually saw those bullets hitting brick post as they ducked in the back of stores or hit the floor or sheltered in bathrooms. Some of the shoppers tell me that these stores have clearly practiced for situations like this one and really seemed to know what to do. But for those who were not yet in stores and heard the gunshots and saw smoke from all those gunshots, they say it was a terrifying situation. We actually spoke with one woman who was trying to find her daughter right as this all began. I see a lot of people running and we are wondering like what's happening. So as we're approaching, we hear more rounds, heavy rounds. So I'm looking for my daughter. So I go around very fast and as I'm coming approaching the fat uh, burger, uh, you know, the Starbucks, because my daughter said, you know, shooting, I said, yeah, I'm already here. I'm looking for you. So the cops were already, you know, they were uh, fighting each other. Uh, there was dead people on the floor. A lot of people, they were like, you know, hiding. And as I was going around, they told me to get away, you know, to move out. And I kept on telling them, I'm looking for my daughter. So there was this Mexican family, three people murdered. And the dad was, you know, uh, crying for them. And he was uh, wounded as well. We've spoken with other people who were working or shopping here when this all started that tell us they saw those victims down as well. They also saw who they believe was the gunman down. Uh, and obviously, in addition to their fear throughout all of this, they say their hearts go out to whoever those people are, which, of course, we are hoping to learn more information about shortly. But again, there's just a lot of panic amongst people. It's hard to imagine for that mother waiting to reunite with her daughter, who obviously took time with hundreds of people and cars and everyone trying to gather into these parking lots across the street. But at this point, it seems like most people have reconnected with their families, and now they are just waiting for the scene to clear. Allie, I know you've been there for a while, and as we've seen through the perspective from Chopper 5 and the cameras, all the law enforcement that responded to that area, have you noticed, have any of those agencies left? Are you still seeing the same amount of police and officers in that area? I would say it's the same amount. It's maybe quieted down just a little, but the thing that really stands out here is that you've got not just Allen police, you've got state agencies, uh, and you've got police from all over this area. I've seen Wiley, Frisco, all of the surrounding cities here working what seems like from the outside to be a very large scene and situation inside of the mall. Katie, these parking lots across from the outlet mall on Chelsea Boulevard were the reunification point for the hundreds who were just shopping here when those gunshots rang out. Everyone we spoke with said they either had to hit the floor or seek shelter while they waited for help for hours. In the middle of a sunny day of shopping, chaos ensued. I see a lot of people running and we are wondering like what's happening. So as we are approaching, we hear more rounds, heavy rounds. And I could see like the, um, like the smoke coming from it and like the, uh, like here glass shattering. I could see, um, you know, people running and then that's when we got into the store. 
hours after the shooting, shock, fear, and disbelief coursed through witnesses who sheltered with strangers. I was just kind of herding, helping herd everyone to the back of our store. Following protocol, practiced in drills and police like Joseph Gallagher hoped never to use. We start hearing, rut, rut, rut. No way. We thought it had to be roofing. He walks up. He's seeing the pillars in front of our store get hit by rounds. Gallagher says he and a customer pulled concealed weapons before scurrying to shelter. So we ran to the back, barricaded it with some concrete bricks, and then right then on the security camera, thank God we went in the back at that time, we saw him walk right by, masked up, fake police outfit on. Others say they waited for an hour or more with no information. I'm just like, this is, this is real life. Like, you see this in movies, you see this like, on TV and stuff, but this is real life. Until eventually police escorted them, arms raised, to a safe place to reunite with loved ones. So if your car is inside here, you're probably not going to get it tonight. Man, it was after those people had waited hours to find out about their cars that many of them learned their cars are still part of the crime scene tonight. They met with some victim services representatives who were here from across several of the agencies that are working this scene who encouraged them to have somebody pick them up or to get one of the free rides that was being offered here. Many of those rides came from family members who were very eager to hug their loved ones tonight. Katie Vince. Katie and Vince, like you said, we know there are four victims here tonight at Medical City McKinney with three in critical condition. We know that a fifth was taken to Medical City Plano and a sixth to Children's. And we are told that the youngest of all of those victims is five years old. Now, when it comes to the victims who were killed, officials have not released any names, but at least one family has confirmed that their son is among those who died. When a sunny Saturday crowded with shoppers devolved into chaos, family says 20-year-old Christian LaCour was just doing his job. Today, LaCour's father confirmed to NBC5 that his son was among the eight people killed by a gunman at Allen Premium Outlets, where he worked as a security guard. In a social media post, LaCour's grandmother called the Farmersville resident a beautiful soul with goals for his future. Though the rest of yesterday's victims remain unidentified, dozens came to pay their respects at a memorial on the Outland Mall's edge. In front of eight crosses, survivors and neighbors sought comfort from strangers. Some prayed. Cynthia Murphy laid flowers and a bear with thoughts of the youngest victim heavy on her heart. She hasn't had a chance to even see what life is about, right? I have a granddaughter that's seven, so my heart is bleeding today. This is different, right? We've had 190 mass shootings, but this is in our backyard. Earlier tonight, I also spoke with a man who said until late today, he was desperately searching for his friend here at this hospital or others in the area, and he did not learn until late this evening that his friend was among those killed, meaning he waited an agonizing 24 hours to get that information confirmed. We are still pushing the hospital and DPS for information about the other victims, and we will pass those updates along as soon as we have them. Katie Vince. Flowers and a little teddy bear for the five-year-old. You know, he hasn't had a chance to even see what life is about, right? I have a granddaughter that's seven, so my heart is bleeding today. This is different, right? We've had 190 mass shootings, but this is in our backyard. It's different. It's extremely hard. It's extremely emotional.
Brian Brittany, well, this employee tells me that they definitely sensed danger. They didn't know exactly what was going on, but they helped save lives at only 16. And although physically okay, this employee tells me they're still processing those traumatic moments they lived at their part-time job. In the midst of chaos, fear, and carnage. I do remember hearing something that alarmed us. Bravery. And I was determining if I should hide myself. But then I saw that there were more people coming in. Kira Mojica helped at least a dozen people escape out the back door as shots rang out. It was just a really horrifying moment. Her stepfather, an owner of the Allen Outlet restaurant, proud of the courage his 16-year-old displayed got hit close to home, how close he got to my uh, employees, to my daughter, to um, all those customers. And today, more than 72 hours after the shooter opened fire, killing at least eight people at the Allen Premium Outlets. First shots were fired, I think it was 337 or something like that. Investigators provided a preliminary timeline. I think within three or four minutes, the Allen PD officer had neutralized the suspect and the shooting stopped. On the ground, Texas DPS says Saturday's response from partner agencies was, quote, commendable. Everybody did what they were supposed to do and responded to the scene. However, attorney Daryl Washington, who represents survivor Irvin Walker, questions what could have been done to prevent the attack. How was this person able to walk around and, and kill so many people as well as injure individuals? So we are just investigating and just seeing what could have been done perhaps to prevent something like this from happening. The focus now, the shooter's motive. It looks like he targeted the location rather than a specific group of people. He was very random in the people he killed. Meanwhile, city leaders wrapping up tonight's council meeting in less than three minutes as a sign of respect for the victims of the nation's latest mass shooting.